comes a blend two out. Scored a run in the first, another one in the second, one in the third. Pirates one in the fourth, and it comes a run in the fifth. And Salazar called out on strikes for the second out in the sixth inning. Reed's got a good enough fastball. When he sets it up with that slow curve, it looks a little faster than it really is. And that time Salazar took one over the outside corner and couldn't pull the trigger. Domingo Ramos fouls it. Domingo tripled up the right field line in the second inning. His second triple of the year. Called out on strikes in the fourth. Eleven hits in this game. The Cubs have eight of them. And four of the five runs. Look out. Ramos hits the deck. One one to count. There's a shot sharply hit and out of the reach of Bell and the left for a base hit. Second hit for Ramos and that keeps the sixth inning going. Just to the right of Bell. Domingo two out of three. The crew here sends Bill Hammond. Get well wishes down in Bloomington. And a couple of Cup fans looking on in Phoenix. Mel Corey and Ron Cohn wishing the Cubs well. Run away from the Pirates. Holy cow. As, as we go to the bottom of the seventh, the Cubs lead four to one. group of 400 people from WGN who have a little salute for you on Harry Carey Appreciation Day. Well, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Let's make that magic number two. No, the Phillies didn't score in the top of the eighth. Daly stopped them, I guess. And the Cardinals tied up 1-1, batting in the eighth. Wilkins swinging that bat like he means business. Boy, look, watch. You talk about great defensive plays. Andre Dawson had just made one out of this world. And look at Salazar robbing Lavalier of the hit. Lavalier behind the plate now. One ball, two strikes. Foul tipped it. Wilkins has done a pretty good job as you look at Luis Salazar and Joe Girardi. Some great defense from both of those young men today. Wilkins has gotten the game into the territory that you would expect Lancaster and Williams to take over in case he has any problems. Hey, he struck him out. That brings up Marvell Wynn. He has scored twice. He's played the role of the leadoff man to perfection. He scored a run yesterday. Scored two runs in the first game of the series. Rick Reed on the mound for the Pirates. Strike over the inside corner. The Bears won easily. The Cubs have a four to one lead here in the seventh. The Cardinals batting in the bottom of the eighth are tied with the Phillies 1-1. 
Ground ball might get through. Got it. Base hit. And Marvell Wynn continues to sparkle. I tell you, the thing about Wynn and Salazar, they're going to be helpful next year, too. They're two veteran ball players who are in the prime of their lives, as said, baseball players go. And they're not only helping this year, they'll be around next year, you can bet. Marvell Wynn came up with Pittsburgh, and they realized he was a pretty good player. And when you consider the deal that Jim Fry made getting Salazar and Wynn to help the Cubs in the pennant push, what started out as a small deal, a secondary deal, has turned into a pretty good deal for the Cubs. Well, you know, it isn't a good deal unless it helps both teams, and apparently as it has helped San Diego, too. Calvin Chiraldi has won three straight games as a starting pitcher. And also in the home run, yeah. How about that, a three-run homer? <laughs> yeah. I guess we taught him that here in Chicago. There's a ground ball sharply hit. San, San, Mitch Williams going for his 36th save will be the pitcher. And Bonilla takes it high. McElroy had replaced Jeff Parrott and has walked Tony Pena with the bases loaded. St. Louis is leading 2-1 in the bottom of the eighth. Two balls, no strike. Ball three to Benio, Holman for their only run of Steve Wilson in the fourth inning. They're calling a ball, and they're going to walk Bobby Bonilla because Williams went to his mouth on the mound. You can blow in your hand. You just can't wet your hand. Williams did it. And so Bonilla board on the base on balls. And now the bullpen up and going for the Cubs again quickly. Here's R.J. Reynolds. He's two out of three. Montreal has scored five in the top of the ninth to lead 6-5 in New York. The Mets now batting. Girardi goes out to settle down. Mitch Williams, you know the adrenaline is flowing. The Cubs to reduce their magic number to three, Salazar goes over and talks to him. Boy, almost two and a half million people. As a matter of fact, if you count the no-shows during the course of the year, the paid attendance for uh, Chicago Cub baseball would be well over two and a half million. Maybe even as many as three. 100,000 more because there were some earlier games in bad weather. A lot of people had tickets and didn't use them. Two balls. Now it's three balls. He's thrown seven balls in a row. Reynolds. Strike. Out of chair, we're in the top of the ninth. Four to one in favor of the cup. Strike two. Three balls, two strikes. Bonilla, the runner at first. Way wide ball. Two walks in a row. Here comes Don Zimmer, and he's going to make a change. Sometimes Williams gets in these streaks where he can't find the plate, and Don Zimmer doesn't want to see this one get away. And so Williams cannot pick up his 36th save. He could bring another left-hander, Ossenmacher, with Van Slyke, a left-hand hitter, do. And that's who it is, Ossenmacher. We'll be back with more following this message. sudden need for your undivided attention. Well, Paul Ossenmacher going for the first save of the year has not been credited with a save yet. 
Osprey, either Atlanta or the Cubs, will try to pick it up here. And Van Slaw will play third base as a flip flop their batting order. Paul Asenmacher comes in at 3 and 3, the ERA 382 on for the 61st time. The 12th time as a Cub. He's 2 and 0 oh in the Chicago Cup uniform with a high ERA of 470. Giving up just three home runs in 73 innings and walked just 26. So he inherits base runners at first and second. And the left hand hitter due up in Andy Van Slyke. Well, Baltimore got beat 2 to nothing by the Yankees. Toronto is tied up at Milwaukee 2 2 in the bottom of the sixth. Andy Van Slyke. 0 for 2 today. Runners at first and second. He had a cut he missed. Boy, we had some brilliant defensive play in the seventh by Dawson and Salazar. After Reynolds had started off with a double to prevent their scoring. Now they have runners at first and second. Strikes and call. They posted the one up for St. Louis in the bottom of the eighth, two to one. Philly batting in the top of the ninth. strikeout of the year for Paul Eisenmacher. He's averaged over a strikeout per inning pitch. And when that breaking ball is on, he's as tough to hit as anybody. There's Jose Lee, no for three today. Robbed of a hit on a sensational catch by Andre Dawson. One ball, no strikes. Cubs about hit the 12 to 5. High pop foul out of play. There you see the score with the Cardinals just one inning away from keeping the pressure on the Cubs. One ball, one strike. One man out. Lean the hitter. Outside, ball two. You can see the home plate section, how dark it is. Asamakers throwing out of the bright sunlight. Fouls it. Oh, Dawson over to the stand. Can't make the play. A fan reached up. I doubt that Dawson could have reached over the wall that far anyway. Well, boy, he gives you all he's got out there, doesn't he? He's very close to this ball. Ben might have interfered with this as Andre tries to go up and get it. Might have hurt his wrist right there on the wall, as you see. Two balls, two strikes. Balls and foul into the left field stands this time. Two balls, two strikes. One out, two on. Cubs lead four to one. Trying to reduce their magic number down to three. Hit is one runner going to score. It's a double for Jose Lee. A double off the left center field wall. And that makes it a four to two ball game with only one out. 21st double of the year in RBI, number 47. And Lean just missed hitting the ball out of the ballpark. He 
He's only hit two home runs this year. This is almost number three. So now the tying run at second base in the person of Jose Lean. Things getting a little serious as Reedus announces a pinch hitter, and I would think that would mean that Paul Ossenmacher will leave this ball game. Gary Reedus will be the pinch hitter. He's hitting 283 for the year. As a pinch hitter, he's three out of 12. The two tying runs are at second and third. And here comes Don Zimmer out. Montreal, by scoring five in the ninth, has defeated the New York Mets six to five. And does that remove the Mets? I think that eliminates them. No, they still have some life, but not much. With seven games to go, they'll trail the Chicago Cubs by six right now. Six and a half for the Cubs hold their lead. Pico will be the new pitcher. And Gary Reedus was announced as the pitch hitter. Let's see if they change. Yeah, Benny Di Stefano. Di Stefano. Benny Di Stefano will bat for Gary Reedus, who was announced as the pitch hitter. Jeff Pico comes out for the 50th time, 2 and 1 with a 3.95 ERA. 84 in the third innings, 94 hits, seven home runs. He's walked 31, struck out 35. He inherits a couple of base runners at second and third. The tying run at second base. And a tough, powerful left-hand pinch hitter up. Di Stefano is 12 out of 46 as a pinch hitter with seven runs batted in. Overall, he's had one homer this year that was against the Cubs in Pittsburgh. He's hitting only 236. Let's pause here for station identification. You're watching Cubs baseball on WGN, Chicago's very own Channel 9. They've just posted a 6-5 to five Montreal victory over the Mets. Di Stefano, left-hand hitter. Runners at second and third. Only one out. Ground ball foul. Di Stefano, normally a dead bull hitter. So if Pico can keep that sinker low and away, he's got a chance of getting the ground ball. Cubs will concede the run for the out in this situation with the infield back. Pico's pitch. Again he fouls it. On the ground. Outside first base. Owen to the count. to two Cubs. Runners at second and third. He turns it over and keeps it low and away. Jeff Pico does not have a save this year and what a time for his first. And only John Cangelosi stands in his way. Cangelosi single to left his first time up. And stayed in the ball game. Cangelosi hitting 223. Outfield can afford to play a little more shallow, so even on a base hit, they might have a play at the plate on Jose Lee. Strike to nothing. Almost a wild 
pitch good save in there by Joe Girardi. That's something to see 37,000 people waving. 37,000 posters all wrapped up. There they go again. Expressive eyes. Ball. Two balls and the strike. The Cardinals have won their game two to one. So the magic number cannot get below three. But we'll get to three if the Cubs can get Tangelosi out. held uncommonly in check during the series. Three balls and a strike. Sean will be in there before it's all over. He's getting a good rest. 
and uh, Domingo Ramos is playing good ball in shortstop too, as he do has done all year long. There's the W top the flag ball, and that's what it's all about, and that's what it's been all about all year long. The Cubs now have won 89 games while losing 67. The magic number is only three and only six games left all on the road. The next home game will be October the 4th. The first game of the playoffs. Here it is, October the 4th. The first game of the playoffs. Will that be a night or a day? I don't know, but it's going to be exciting whenever it is, and the Cubs will go to Montreal hoping that they can reduce that magic number to zero before they have to go to St. Louis. Here's some of the players. That's Vance Law, the lone player in the dugout. The next time these fans, other than on television, will be televising all six games on the road. They're chanting, we want the Cubs, hoping that a couple of them will just come out and wave to them. The fans who have been so great all year long. And they don't want to leave young, this ballpark. Young, old, medium age. See you in October, says the sign. You certainly will. We're going to stick. We don't know whether they're going to come out or not. Remember when Jim Fry won in 1984? They came out, but that was he. They had already clinched the championship on the final home game. Meet me in Frisco. <laughs> and remember, the two teams have tied over the years' play. The Cubs have won six. San Francisco has won six. Well, I think we can safely say you've seen all the excitement, all the great baseball, all the thrills, all the excitement that you can expect to see for one day and some 2,491,000 plus some change have established a new attendance record. Two million four hundred ninety-one thousand plus. All right, then. we're going to stay with them now. They're dying down a little bit. Okay, I think we can safely go to the... We'll, we'll be back with the total. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here they come. Here they come. There's Mark Grace. He's already taken his shirt off. Dwight Smith. Listen to the crowd. They're going to circle the ballpark. And look at Mark Grace. is leading the way as the fans applaud. There's Mitch Williams. The rest of the team trailing out toward the bleachers to do exactly what they did in 84 when they took a lap around the field saluting the fans in all parts of the ballpark and the whole team is out on the field now.
Mike Bilecki, who had a sensational year. Rick Rona, the young catchers. They all had started undressing the clubhouse. Look at the fans. Greg Maddox also had a great year. Well, they've all had great years, and it's not over yet. There's Damon Berryhill with the cast over his shoulder. Don Zimmer's coming out. Don Zimmer is in front of the dugout. And Zimmer without his cap. Ryan Sandberg. Louis Salazar. There's Andre Dawson. Zim looks a little tired. <laughs> I think Zim I looks know. a little emotional at this point. I don't know about the uh, about a diet with all the emotion involved besides. There's Rick Sutcliffe. They've all circled the whole ballpark and they're ready to walk through the dugout again on the way to the clubhouse. And there is the cheerleader, Mark Grace. There's Sean. I thought the Sonometer was resting today. Well, now I think they can go into the clubhouse and have their shower. Dwight Smith and Sean Dunstan will stay with you until they leave the field. And there's Zim, and look at the hand Zim is getting as he comes to the dugout. The next home game, October the 4th, against the Giants in all probability, right here at this very same ballpark. Well, 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 what a day this has been. We'll be back with the totals in a moment. <laughs>